So I'm Betty Martin. I'm, this is my new friend, Harry Fattis, and he's the inventor of the three minute game, which if you've watched any of the other my stuff, you know that that's the centerpiece of my work. It taught me so much. Hi, I'm Harry Fattis, and I, we are talking today from the Eastern Mountain Retreat Center in upstate New York, where I am a resident. I have been here for 15 years. We're celebrating our 15th anniversary this year. So come and visit us if you haven't. And uh, I am a life coach and former instructor at the Body Electric School, where I developed the workshop Power, Surrender, and Intimacy called PSI. And also during that time, the three minute game, which uh, Betty had found out about <laughs> and uh, is, has some enthusiasm for propagating. So more people will know about the three minute game because of Betty's work. So I'm very happy about that. Thank you. Before I lived here, I lived in San Francisco, and uh, I lived also in Sonoma County in Sebastopol, and I was working at the Body Electric School, uh, which has a retreat center at Wildwood in, at the Russian River. And I became an instructor for the Body Electric School in the 90s. And there was a recurring reality that I was working mostly with men, that men did not know how to ask for what they want. Yeah. And there was this poem by Rumi, uh, which said, you must ask for what you really want. <laughs> and everybody was saying that. Right. But nobody knew how to do it. Yeah. And it would be a blank. Tell me what you want. Well, I don't know. Do what you're doing, or do what you want to do. And uh, I thought this is an, this is a beautiful admonition mm -hmm. from a poet, and it seems easy, but nobody knows how to do it. Yeah. And my mind is, in one level, try to solve a problem. Try to, how could we do that? Mm -hmm. And I was teaching. I, I uh, created a workshop for the Body Electric School called Power, Surrender, and Intimacy, which was from the secret behind the creation was that I am in, I'm a recovered alcoholic for 28 years, and there is a step in a 12-step program, and it says, made a decision to turn my life and my will over to the care of a power greater than myself. Mm -hmm. So I thought, mentally, I, I, I can think about this, but I can't figure it out. Mm -hmm. Emotionally, I get it, but I don't have the feeling that I've done that. How do you know? And then I thought, well, if s somebody tied me up, mm -hmm. my life would be, if you tied me yes. up, my life would be in your care. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, turn my life and my will, my will yeah. over. I would know I'm doing it. Yeah. And this would create a uh, an intimate bond between us. Yeah. So in creating this workshop, I thought, how am I going to get these guys to do this? Nothing, nothing works really. So I don't know whether it was the thinking about it, but it just, these words came to me one day, tell me what you would like me to do to you. And I thought, oh, that's really simple. Yeah. So that's how it started. Uh, and it's, it, it's, it happened as a three minute thing mm -hmm. because we all have these elaborate fantasies. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I don't know you, I've just met you. Maybe right. yours would be, you would like to be in a pavilion <laughs> and sensuously pleasured by 12 or 15 people because you're beautiful and you deserve it. But how are you going to get this assemblage together? Yeah. It's not likely to happen unless you pay a group of people to do it. So I thought we, there's one thing to explore our fantasies in a way that when, if I'm in a personal engagement with you, that you don't ask me for any of those fantasies mm -hmm. because we are here and we are now. One person, one person. Mm -hmm. What could I do for you or what could you do for me in three minutes that I would accept, either as a giver or receiver, that we could accomplish. And at the end of that, you would be able to say, 
I asked for it, mm -hmm. I got it, and I'm grateful. Mm. That is the key thing here. Yeah. Or maybe I, I'm grateful and the next time I do it, I would like to tweak it. Yeah. Or yeah. something like, oh, I should have asked for that. Or, yeah. So the more you play it, uh, the more you learn what you don't want. You thought you wanted yeah. it, but you don't want it. Yeah. Or, I, I remember people in the workshop would say, well, all right, I, I don't like spanking. So I, I would say, well, that's good. You figured out your list mm -hmm. of what I don't like. Mm -hmm. And what, but what do you like? Let's get that list going. Yeah. 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 And what, and you can, you can, uh, you can do that in three minutes a lot of times in ways that you could not actually do if you had a longer time. That's right. And some people like to expand it to five minutes and uh, it's a very good, if you're having an intimate uh, encounter with one other person, it's a very good way to get started. Yeah. And a lot of people ask for, uh, before the Big Bang happens, let's have some foreplay or yeah. some mood setting things. Yeah. And this is all just, it's a typical female male conversation. A woman will say, but you don't spend enough time beforehand. Mm -hmm. And the guy doesn't understand that. What, what do you want me to do? <laughs> You know? And she has no clue how to ask. How to say that. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. This just bizarre? Yeah. yeah, it is. So if you would say, I would like you to rub my back for three minutes, any guy is, or girl is going to say, well, I could do that. Yeah. Yeah. I could do that. I, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen minutes. Yeah. yeah. Then we're connected. Yeah. In some way. And these vague things that people say is, I want you to be present. Yeah. Whatever that means. It does it. Yes. Yeah. I hate that. It would just like make me furious. What do you mean? I'm sitting here with you. Yeah. You know, and people say, well, I want, I want you to love me. And uh, I say, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. I want unconditional love. What are you talking about? I want you to rub my feet for three minutes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I could do that. And yeah. 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 Yeah, I had one person say, I use this a lot for some workshops, and one gal said, and I said, how do you want me to touch you? And she said, well, I want you to touch me in a way that conveys love and care. And I said, well, um, for some people, love and care means soft and slow. For some people, love and care means whips and chains. So I have to actually know what you want me to do which is how you want to feel a certain way, but what I need to know is how you want me to actually do that. What is it that will help you feel that way? And she's like, oh, yeah. And I said, that was a no-no. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And you can do this in a, in a non-sensual mm -hmm. activity. Yeah. Um, I, we're, we're at home, and finally we have date night. And I could say, well, what is it you would like to do for 20 minutes? And you would say, I would like to sit on the sofa and drink tea with you and not talk. Mm -hmm. And I would think, well, I never thought of that. But you thought of that. Do I want to give that to you? Mm -hmm. And then you, I give it to you. And you say, oh, this is just what I wanted. Mm -hmm. But you were waiting to, this is also mm -hmm. the thing that we cut through, mm -hmm. uh, is mind reading. Mm -hmm. You want me to read, you want me to read your mind. Isn't that to what we're doing? Yeah. <laughs> if you really loved me, you would read my, my mind. mind. Of course. You've had experiences <laughs> like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was usually the guilty one on that. Were you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and we don't really do it. And, and uh, in my experience, we wait and wait and wait until somebody does that one thing, mm -hmm. like cut your nose. <laughs> And that did it for you, and you yep. think, oh, we're, we're going to be soulmates. <laughs> right. Because I did that thing that you have been wanting all of your life. Yeah. 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 So there's a companion to the three-minute game, uh, which I spoke about the fantasies, mm -hmm. how the three-minute game doesn't exclude the fantasies, but they're separate paths. And the, the key to getting at the fantasy is to use the word always. Tell me what you have always wanted. Oh, yeah. oh. Ah. 
Oh, first of all, that's a very different question. Can I trust you? Yeah. And then, yeah. uh, you know, I've always wanted this, and I yeah. can't tell anybody, or yeah. I have never told anybody. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. well, that's a very different question. Yeah, we have we have people who, well, make it simple, meet each other. They they go out for dinner because they both want something, and they're going to go home and have sex. And they're, they're going through all this and they're going to have sex because what they've always wanted is happening at the end. Mm. And neither one is saying, all I wanted was to just be here with somebody and be held. Right. And I find the three-minute game allows us to get to that place where, oh, okay, well, I wanted that and nothing happened and then I wanted that and then I wanted that. And then he just looked at me and said, this is for personal, for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. I've had to ask people to do this. Uh, I'm right here, Harry. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah. That's what I have always wanted. <laughs> yeah. And I found out, it, tell yeah. me what it is that uh, you want me to say to you. Yeah, Yeah. we talked about this when we talked on my phone before. We talked about um, using this with your coaching clients because there's something that they need to hear or want to hear and it's going to be different than the other the next person yes yeah. so i could tell you this is you have beautiful eyes and you are beautiful and you it might not that's not what you want to hear yeah it doesn't what you want to hear may or may not have anything to do with hearing about your beauty yeah. or your brain i could say that about you i know that that's that would be true mm -hmm. you're really smart but that may not be what you want to hear. So you, we just say, okay, thank you. Yeah. But there's something, I'm not going to ask you, yeah. in the back of there, we always want to hear. And I could hear, I am right here, Harry, mm -hmm. a thousand times. Yeah. It's just, wow. an, I think it's called an unmet need, mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, the three minute game as I learned it, through the Power of Surrender and Intimacy workshop later, which you developed in a group, um, they framed it as two questions. What do you want me to do to you? And what do you want to do to me? Yes. Yeah. And, um, uh, yeah, it was fun right off the bat. <laughs> so I'm taking this home. And then when I started using it, then sometime later when I started working with clients and I pulled out of the closet and started playing with the clients. I was amazed at how difficult it was for people to, number one, as you're saying, notice what it is that they want. And and then, of course, I see it in other people, and then, of course, I see it in myself, like, where are the places in my life that I don't know what I want, I'm not asking for. That, that's the problem with working with people. You start seeing it in yourself. Yes, yes. yes. And but what most surprised me was that this the first question, what do you want me to do to you? We can kind of figure it out. Like we may not be very good at it, but we at least have some context of what it means. But the second question, what do you want to do to me? That's the one that completely threw people. And I had one one person. This was fairly early. It was a little evening workshop. And she, and this was a person who had a lot of experience with uh, group touch and sex and all kinds of stuff. She was very experienced. And the, the previous thing, the guy had, the person she was working with said, I want you to rub my head or whatever it was. And she was perfectly comfortable. But when he said to her, how do you want, what do you want to do to me? She couldn't even understand the syntax of the question. Like, what do you mean? What does that mean? Like, she couldn't get it. And I sort of coached her, well, maybe you want to, he was wearing this fuzzy sweater, you know, maybe you want to feel the fuzziness of the, like, and she said, well, why would I want to touch somebody? Like, it just, like, it doesn't make any sense to her. Um, and I noticed that really with a lot of people, it, it doesn't, you know, how do you, what do you want to do to me? People say, well, whatever you want. Or, well, I want to touch you in the way that you want to be touched, or I want to give to you in this way. And it, it, it often took a lot of coaching to turn it around to know this is actually for you. I'm asking what you want. 
What do you, you think is underneath that? that? Well, I tell you what I've come to over the years, and what I noticed was that if so, so I took the two questions: What do you want to do to me, and what do you want me to do to you? And and I noticed after a while that it was sort of too big of a question for what I was working play with. And I narrowed the options, and so now I say, how do you want me to touch you, and how do you want to touch me? Uh, and we'll use it diff both ways, and there's different variations, but that's the way I mostly use it. And so what I noticed was, if I'm asking you, how do you want to touch me? And you don't actually know how to experience pleasure with your hand then there's no, there's like, there's no neurological pathway to make any sense of touching someone for your own pleasure. Because the pleasure route from your hands into your brain is just not, just not hooked up. And so if I'm touching you and I don't feel pleasure in my hands, what's left? I'm trying to get a response out of you or trying to give you some pleasure. And so I learned that this thing has to be hooked up. So now I actually start with that. I start with, how do you hook up the pleasure centers? How do you hook up your, your sensory data in your hands to your pleasure centers? And we do that, I do that with an object so that you take the interpersonal dynamic out of it. Mm -hmm. And once that clicks, it's very visible when it clicks, people are like, oh, oh yeah, it feels good. Um, sometimes it takes a few seconds, sometimes it takes weeks. So the people that people discover that it yeah. feels good, I feel good touching you. Yes. That feels good yes. and in my finger. Right? Yes, yeah. And that has turned out to be uh, the, the piece that has to be in place before touching you for my pleasure makes any sense, other than producing pleasure in you, which is also wonderful. but. It's a different kind. Yeah. I think so that, so that's what I that's what I found and that's what I play with now. Underneath this there is the idea that I have permission. Yes. To want something for myself. Yes. And want to do something to you. Yes, absolutely. So that's that is hard. hard. Yes, it is. <laughs> that's hard. I have permission to say uh, I would like to hold your hand. Yeah. So behind me, there could be all kinds of voices yes. that say, that's the most ridiculous thing. You're right. a grown man yeah. and you want to hold this woman's hand. Yeah. Yeah. So I need permission to say, I don't know why, but that's what I want. Yeah. She might think I'm ridiculous. You might right. think I'm ridiculous for asking that. Yeah. Yeah. Or it could be even deeper. It could be involve a fetish. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like, I want to look at your sandals if I'm a foot fetish. Yeah, right. I just want to look yeah. for three minutes. Yeah. Because I've never been able to do that because it's always, so, we got into a rush right. with something. Or you have to sneak a peek. Sneak a peek, that's yeah. right. Yeah. You, you could ask, that's a good thing to ask people, what, ha what peaks have you been sneaking? <laughs> that's a great Because we all question. have that. That is a great question. Yeah, like, oh. Uh, and I have that personal experience yeah. for various historical reasons yeah. that I would be sitting on a train and I would be looking across from me at a man's hands. Mm -hmm. would have to be looking this way yeah. and my eyes going that way yeah. because I, there's something about this that is almost overwhelming to me, looking at these hands. Mm -hmm. And I was fortunate enough to have a, a I was involved with reevaluation counseling for many years, mm -hmm. and I was able to accomplish all of this. I want to look, and then I want, I mean, I really want to look, mm -hmm. and then I want to touch, mm -hmm. just your hand. Mm -hmm. And this is like crazy. Mm -hmm. what, who wants to do these kinds of things? Well, you know, actually, most people do, I think. Do <laughs> I do, yeah. And so, because what I guess, similarly, what I found is, once you actually get it, that you have to, once I actually get that I have permission to touch you in some way, and it's for me, it's like, I get yeah. to do that? You know, because we're born wanting to do that. We just don't have any context to do it in once we grow so up. So children do that, don't yeah. they? Oh, yes. Yeah, oh yeah. 
Well, whenever they kids, want. Little kids, they yes. climb all over you, stick their finger in your nose. And yes. Yeah. And dogs. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. So, and, and as you said, it's hard. It's just, you know, to acknowledge that there's something that I want to do to me, and that just because I want it, it's not because I'm being generous. Yes. Yeah, that's hard. Or I don't want to, it's not to make you feel good. Yeah, it's because I want it. And, you know, you can put something into uh, categories of voyeurism and mm -hmm. exhibitionism, but you could say, you know, Artists are warriors. They want just want to look at this beautiful mm -hmm. figure. Mm -hmm. That in enough is yeah. a, a permission yeah. and a privilege. Yeah. yeah, and it creates a bond. I think I discovered the work. The name of this workshop was Power and Surrender because I didn't like S M. Uh -huh. I didn't like this uh, attached to what was from in the eighteen nineties. A, a psychiatric illness. Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, in, in the 1890s, the Germans were trying to figure how to make uh, eroticism scientific, that which could be a good thing. So they did a lot of studies, mm -hmm. and they, they uh -oh. <laughs> as a result of the studies in science, there's a norm, uh -huh. right? And there is who is in the middle, and who yeah. is on this side or that side. And what are you actually admitting to anyway? Yes, and okay. if, if you're outside the norm, you either have to go to prison or a mental hospital. So heterosex the word heterosexual was coined as an aberration, mm -hmm. and homosexual was invented in those days. No one ever used that word mm -hmm. before as an abnormality, mm -hmm. and S&M was an abnormality, and I thought, why are we defining this mm -hmm. by, there's nothing abnormal about this. Mm -hmm. So then I thought about power, and I thought about surrender, and I thought about the spiritual path of this, and so it was P.S. And there's something like I like threes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm a Trinitarian thinker. <laughs> Twos, yin and yang, are yeah. boring to me. I want a third thing in there. So I was I conducted a spanking clinic uh, at Wildwood in the temple, where each there were two people, and you were spanked, and then you spanked. You alternate. Right. And two people came out and they said, I heard this conversation. I had no idea that spanking had anything to do with intimacy. Ooh. And I thought, that's my word. Yeah. This is what happens. And this actually mirrors the relationship we have with God. Yeah. Is it intimate yeah. or are we foreigners? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so in this power and surrender dynamic, you come close to somebody. And you can ask for anything. Yeah. And you can explore that possibility of if if I am, if you have turned your will over to me, what kind of person do I become? Yeah. Do I become a little dictator? Or do I become uh, aware of all the gifts I can give you? Yeah. And all the responsibilities. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So this dynamic is a way of really exploring a lot of personal material. And you mentioned that if you are doing this work, the people you're doing it with call you to be authentic. Mm -hmm. You can't really bullshit your way through this, mm -hmm. or uh, people will see it. They will recognize it if you're not authentic. Yeah. And they watch you. Yeah. Okay. We could probably go all day. Like I'm sure we could, yeah, <laughs> you're very interesting. And likewise. So the, the synopsis, or the way I learned it, it the, the workshop that you designed, which I took later, is two questions, two people. Each person asks the other person both questions, so you're taking turns, and each question is an offer. So the questions are, what do you want me to do to you, and what do you want to do to me? So when I say, what do you want me to do to you, I'm offering you my service. Yes. And you get to decide what you want. So ask me the question. What do you want me to do to you, Harry, for so three minutes? So in a workshop, she's A and I'm B. And it, it gets so confusing with people because they can't believe this is happening, that you have to write it down and you have to give an A and a B. So yeah. you're A. What, what would you like me to do to you for three minutes, Harry? I would like you to rub my neck. Then I have to decide 
is this something that I'm okay with? And I take a moment in my workshops, I encourage people to take a notice. Is that a gift that I can give with a full heart? Yeah, I'd be glad to do that. And then we negotiate, do you want to turn around or whatever? And then we do that. For yes. Minutes. So then ask me again. So then the same one? Yes. Okay. What do you want me to do to you for three minutes, Terry? I would like you to kiss my neck. Okay, then I think about that. Is that something that I'm happy to do? Or I might need more details. Well, on the side, on the back, you want to like sloppy or yes. sweet? All okay. Over. Okay, sure. I'll I was just saying. <laughs> so I wanted you to oh, if say. Oh, I say no? If yes. I say, oh, I'm not really comfortable with that. Got a plan B? Yeah, so you're saying, I don't want to do that, but I'm willing to do something else. Yeah. So when you. So I'm willing to kiss you gently, but not sloppily. Okay. Is that okay? So then I could say, yes, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. But so you get an opportunity to say, no, thank you, in a way that continues the conversation to something else. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a refusal. So between two people, there is something that she must be willing to do. Yes. Then we'll find something. And we'll find something. Talking, yeah. So then now I'm A and you're B. Tell me what uh, you would like me to do to you. Ah, oh, hmm. And I pause and notice what is it that I really want? And this is the hardest part for most people, actually. Because this is here and now. Yeah. This is not five minutes ago. Right. Or this yeah. is not five minutes from now. Yeah. This is this is real. So I check in with my, okay, what, what, what part of my body is talking to me saying, do me, do me. And I notice at this moment, the back of my neck and my head, I would love for you to scratch my back of my neck up into my head really nice and slow. And I want to lean over and sort of lean my head on your chest for you to do that. Would you do it? I'm she mo yeah. Betty modeled that you have to just not say yes or no, you have to think about it. And then I would say, I would love to do that. Cool. So then she would put her head here, and I would do that for three minutes, and the timekeeper would say, bomb, time is up. You honor that time is mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. And that's the first part of the game. Yeah. The question being, tell me what you would like to do to me. That, wait, that's the second question. Oh, tell me <laughs> what you would like me to do to you. Yeah. Yeah. So the second question is A and B. Um, t let's see, what do you want to do to me? Or tell me what you want to do to me. Yes. So I have to think, I have to look at Betty and think, what would I like to do to her? And I have to come up with something. I don't want to be offhand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I have to, you know, there's some part of Betty that is pulling me. And I would say, I would like to uh, have you stand up, and I would like to touch your arms to your shoulders up and down. So then it's my turn to notice, is that something I'm okay with? Am I willing to give them that gift? Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. So then we do that. Okay. And then we reverse, I'm A and Betty's B, and I would say, tell me what you want to do to me. What a lovely <laughs> invitation. It's scary it because scary. sometimes we hear, I want to smack you, or I want to, we hear all this stuff that's been done to us that has not been pleasant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm saying, this is, she has the ability to have some power over me. Yeah. Tell me what you want to do to me. And, and what you're offering with that, in the, in the first question you offer, I'm here, I'm going to be of service to you. In this offer, you're offering me you, your body, basically. Yes. So how I want to play with you, I'd like for you to put your head in my lap and I'd like to explore your hair and your whiskers and your face. Just sort of feel around. So my first thought is only three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. So it's a deal and then it's we do that for three minutes. Yeah. And if it's not, say you had a uh, a limit, and in my workshops, I, I, we, we do one round where you set a limit even if you have to make one up, so you have to practice of it. So it might be like, yes, you can do that, but not my beard or whatever, some limit that you might have. Um, because as you said on the first one, 
there is something that you're willing to give, that you're, that you're happy to give. And it's up to you to find what that is so that you're happy yes. to give it and you're not begrudgingly giving it. You can be in this exchange with somebody who is the absolute opposite of somebody you like. It could be somebody you would say is too old or too fat or too whatever. But when you look at somebody, there's something that I can offer you mm -hmm. that is based on our human condition. Mm -hmm. We are not going to have an intimate exchange sexually or I am not promising you that we're going to get married. I am simply giving you three minutes mm -hmm. of my undivided attention. Mm -hmm. No matter who that is, if you, if you can recognize the person's humanity, mm -hmm. then we're in the, in the conversation. And if you're not, then you need your your inability to join in this would indicate some work that you need to do. Yeah. Yeah. Of what, where you're holding back, or yeah, uh, yeah it's it, that that the opportunity to ask for what we want uh, oftentimes is nothing scarier, and or we don't even know what to get most. Often as well. What if I don't know what I want? No problem. We'll just wait till you do. Because it'll take. What if it takes a while? No problem. A lot of people, certain personalities, don't know what they want. Mm -mm. They are completely open to you running the show, mm -hmm. and then feeling unsatisfied. Right, because they didn't get what they mm -hmm. actually wanted. That they didn't notice that they wanted, or didn't admit that they wanted, or I can certainly think of through that. I do this with in coaching with people about their birthdays. So many people complain about their birthday. How was your birthday? Oh, it was awful. It's always the same. Okay, what happened? Well, nobody called me. Nobody sent me a card. Yeah. Nobody invited me to do anything. And I'd say, okay, do you want to have a better birthday next year? Yes. So you make a list of what you would like to ask for. Mm -hmm. you, why do I have to ask for it? <laughs> I don't know how to explain that. If I did, I could be making a lot of money. But there are whole industries that are here, card companies and candy companies and flower companies, to make let you have a happy birthday. So if you could make a list, and they make a list, I want my partner to... This happens a lot in partnerships. Mm -hmm. Take me out for dinner, mm -hmm. buy me a card, and send flowers. Mm -hmm. So. You're my partner, and I'm asking you, my birthday is coming next month. Would you do those three things for me? Sure. You could say yeah. yes to two, or? Sure. Well, I can do this and this, but I, I have a hard time with this one. So I can't afford the flowers, yeah. whatever. Yeah. So, and then you could have several people. Mm -hmm. Would you take me out for dinner? Mm -hmm. And then your birthday comes, and you get what you ask for. Mm -hmm. What would you like me to do for you? Or I could say, would you like me to deliver those flowers in my hand, or would you like them delivered from the flower yes. company? Yes, yeah. Oh, the flower company. Definitely. Okay, well, see, I didn't know that. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. There's nothing like the thrill of it. Oh, yeah, the truck driving <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah, and it could, it could involve those things, or it could involve the way you spend time together. Mm -hmm. It could involve a massage. Mm -hmm. And then at the end this of it, sounding better and better. It makes me want to have a birthday. birthday? October. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember her birthday? October the eighth. Is that it? Sixth. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because it could involve that. You know, you're so busy, and you haven't cooked meatloaf for a long time. Mm -hmm. I would like you to make me a meatloaf dinner, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you could say yes or no. Mm -hmm. And after that's over, you. A lot of people are disappointed because they they realize or they feel sad that all these years have gone mm -hmm. by and they did yeah. ask for this and you could ask for more. Yeah. yeah. Leonard Cohen has a song called uh, uh, "The Sisters of Mercy," mm -hmm. and he, uh, he sees a uh, a beggar who says uh, standing in the door. And he walked by and the beggar said, you must, you must not ask for so much. And then he saw a prostitute standing in the door and she leaned out of her door and she said, uh, 
why not ask for more? <laughs> and I thought, this is the three minute game. You must not ask for so much. Like, why are you so needy? And she said, you must learn to ask for more. Because it's, it's like each one is like a doorway. You go through and you find, okay, I wanted that, but now I don't want that. Yeah. And now this is what I want. And now this is what I want. And it changes, and that's good. Yes. Yeah. And changes. And that's why this three-minute game is about here and now. Yeah. Your, your spirit and your life and your love and your whole center is only here and now. Yeah. It's not, I'm going to plan to be a great, wise Himalayan monk. Or it's not in the past, you know, I used to be. You should have seen me when I was young. Right. You would really have wanted me. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Is that funny? Yeah. <laughs> it, I am not, and you are not, 10 years younger, 20 yeah. pounds later, in another, we're not in Bali. Right. Yeah. And this is where love happens. Right. Here and now. Yeah. Yeah, and, that, and the, the, I've also had people say when I ask, how do we touch you? Well, I always like such and such. And I've gotten very strict about it. In Tell me, give work. me an example. Like and they'll say, well, I always like to have my head scratched. And I'll say, well, that's lovely, but this is for what do you want now? That's a different question. What the question is, wanted. what would you like right now? Oh, oh. Well, actually, right now, I'd like my shoulders rubbed. Great. And you want to do that sitting up, lying down, turn around, hold your life. Oh, however you want. No, this is not about me. This is for you. You get to decide. So when I'm using this at, at work, a lot of with clients, a lot of it is um, bringing them back to the fact that it's their turn. Mm -hmm. Because most of us, I've found, don't really know how to have a turn that's for us. We're so used to going along with whatever we think is supposed to happen. That the fact that knowing how to have a turn that's for me was something that I also learned in co-counseling. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. How to take turns. When it's my turn, it is my turn. And within the limits of what you're willing to give, it's for me, baby. And I want the way I want it. And when it's your turn, I'm putting aside what I want, and I'm going with what you want within the limits that I can. And the ability to take those apart is a very different experience than having this conversation. Like right now, we're having a conversation. And if I were to say, how do you want me to listen to you for five minutes so you can do your thing, this is what co-counsel means, then it's your turn. And those are very different. They, what I've noticed for me and for most people is that they meet a very different need. Mm -hmm. Having being able to take a turn and know who it's for and how to use your turn uh, in a way that's useful and feeds you. Yes. That's pretty rare. And you were forbidden to have one-way sessions where. Yes, you always took turns. You had to do. Yes. That. Yes. And there were people who always took care of other people would say, oh, I don't really need that hour. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're not allowed to do that's that. That's right. And that's true in the three-minute game as well. Yes, it is. Yeah. And there's also a way that the three-minute game can be used to point to wounds that need healing. Mm -hmm. Say more. Please. For example, I may be in a state where I don't want to be touched, and here I am in the three-minute game. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you say to me, Tell me what you would like me to do to you. Say mm -hmm. that. How would you like me to touch you today? I don't want to be touched. I am so don't want you to touch me. And then you would say, Great, I'll just sit here and not touch you for three minutes. No, but what would you <laughs> what like would you me to do? What would you like yeah. me to do? Oh, is there something else you'd like me to do yeah. to not touch? So I would have yeah. to think. I yeah. have all my energy on this. Yeah. Say I'm I'm a survivor of sexual abuse or something, yeah. physical abuse. Yeah. So, so you still have my three minutes. What That's other right. way would you like That's to right. do? That's right. So now I have to think of a new pathway yeah. to allow somebody to get close to ah, me yeah, yeah. without this thing. Yeah. So I would 
think and I would say, well, if you could hold your hands about this far from my face and just watch me, mm. would you do that? I'd be glad to do that. And then you would do what? Yeah, and then I would do that. And then what that would do, and then yeah. I would do that. Yeah. 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 And so, so my job here is the in giving is I don't have to know what's going on with you. No. Not at all. And don't but it's do it's useful to you, and so that's a good enough reason. Don't do anything but this. Is exactly right. Don't do don't this. Do, uh, don't think uh, you're gonna test me. Uh, <laughs> You're going to see, you know, just do this. I'm going to do some juju here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Don't. So there's a lot of this in the three-minute game that is, that is about being. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you allow me to be in a state of being, and you're in a state of being, and don't do anything that was not requested. Yeah. So if you're rubbing my ears, and then you you look at my neck and you think, oh, he might need some work. You're right. a chiropractor. Don't go down to my neck. That's right. It's not allowed. That is exactly right. Do what your intention is. So that's another way of creating uh, uh, an intention for something yeah. for just three minutes. And it's hard, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think they'd like this, or I'm yeah. tired of doing this. And it's very, it, what often happens, particularly for practitioners who I work with mostly these days, is that your hands just sort of do what they do. It's fairly intuitive, and so you just trust them, and they just let, well, That's it right. seemed like, and, and I will call people on that, but is that what he asked you to do? Uh, oh, gosh, no, I didn't even notice I was doing it. And that's That's right. Yeah. 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 So as a giver, we... we I hate, the, I don't like the word boundaries because every time I hear it, it seems as though there's something to keep you out. Yeah. I have a boundary, don't touch my neck. Okay, so I'm, nothing's going to happen to my neck or anything else. Yeah. But if you have the intention to do what I ask you to do, and that means, if, especially if it gets into erotic work, mm -hmm. you can't be touching me somewhere else because that's what attracted you. Right. Touching me where I ask you to touch me. Yes. And it's only three minutes, or if you expand to five minutes. Yeah. But isn't it hard for us to keep yeah. our attention yeah. on our intention? Yeah. Yeah. As if there's more or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I'm really interested in that thing you just said. Okay. And would like to discuss that a little more about how did you say it? Your ability to receive. Yeah. Your yes, we were talking about taking turns and how rare it is that people are comfortable taking turns and that you and I both learned that before we came to the three minute game and I think that's one reason why it was pretty easy and obvious for me right off the bat not because there weren't things for me to learn but because I already knew how to take turns and I had learned that through co-counseling and the ability to take turns means that when it's my turn I really get it that it's my turn and I know how to use my turn in ways that are useful to me and satisfying to me. And when it's your turn, I know how to set my own desires aside and be attentive to you. And that is not a really common skill. Um, and so if, if, to the degree that I'm uh, afraid to have a turn for me, I'm afraid to receive, basically, I'm afraid to receive your attention. To that degree, I'm gonna avoid it and then how I avoid it is by give, 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 or by trying to think that we can both do both at once because it sounds more romantic or enlightened or something. But the ability to really take them apart, I've come to appreciate more and more is the key to either of them working. If you want to experience what it's like to receive, you have to stop giving, at least for those three minutes, or you don't really know what it's like to receive and vice versa. So um, so the idea from that, or what I've noticed out of that, is that the, my ability to actually give, which means my ability to set aside what I want, is dependent on my ability to receive. So if I don't know what I want, I can't set it aside. If I can't put myself in the middle, I can't take myself out of the middle either. So 
my ability to give is dependent on, on my ability to receive both personally and certainly professionally as well. And you're talking about working with practitioners for sacred intimate training. What, what did you say? Um, you, you, they did not know how to be a good client. Yeah, right. Yeah. And you, you, your, your ability to be a practitioner is limited by your ability to be a client. And yes. your commitment to being a client. And you're in, in the sacred intimate training, your ability to be a good client is, number one, to know what your issue is. Yeah. So write it on a card, yeah. this is my issue. To go to your practitioner and say, this is my issue. Yeah. And then throw yourself on the mercy <laughs> of the practitioner yeah. to do something. Yeah. And then after it's over, be grateful. Mm. That's how to be a good client. Yeah. And the part about re remembering the issue, I might have an issue and I walk in and Logan is my practitioner and my issue goes away and there's something else I want to happen. Mm -hmm. Or I may come to you mm. and my issue was something about standing up for myself mm -hmm. and you're completely intimidating so I think I'm not going to do that with her. <laughs> I'll do something easy and say, oh I'd like to do some breathing. Yeah. That's not being a good client. Oh, right, right. Stick with the issue. Yeah. The issue is the same no matter who the practitioner is. Some practitioners are more triggering, mm -hmm. either in a positive or negative way. Mm -hmm. And they come to you and you're the worst, last person I wanted to see. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. You still have this That's issue. Right. This person has something to offer you. Yeah, yeah. It may not be what you thought was going to be, but there's something that they can offer you. Yes. And one of the complaints I hear a lot is, I am always a giver. I don't know how to receive. So I say, stop right there. Yeah. You are not a giver. When I am a giver, I am grateful and I do not complain about giving. If you are complaining about giving, you're doing something else. I don't know yeah. what it is. Yeah. Yeah. You're a martyr or mm -hmm. a slave or mm -hmm. something. Yeah. You're avoiding receiving is what you're doing. There, see? Yeah. And you, how we need training with that. Mm -hmm. True. And the three minute game is a, a, an assistance mm -hmm. in learning how to do that. Yeah. Because you can't, squir you can't squirrel out of your turn to receive. Yes. And you notice on a massage table how people are being touched but can avoid it? Mm -hmm. They can do that by chatting with you mm -hmm. right? about the grocery list. <laughs> yeah. How else? Yeah. Or by letting you do stuff that they didn't really want done. Yes. They that's sort right. of go along with whatever they think you, what they think that the program is that you think. Yeah. And you can, it's easy to detach mm -hmm. when you're receiving. Sure. Sure. So one of the things that came to me from playing the three minute game it, and this is the part that I sort of, sort of geek out about, and there's other videos and stuff on this, so I'm not going to do a lot of detail, but when we ask, when we take turns asking each other those questions, and I say, how do you want me to touch you, and how do you want to touch me, that creates four rounds, right? Yes. So each of those rounds is a different combination of who's doing and who's it for. I'm doing for you, or I'm doing for me, or I'm being done to for me, or I'm being done to for you. Mm -hmm. And those, each of those four quadrants is an entirely different experience. And also what it taught me is that I, I've come to look at the definition of the word receive differently because of that. Because we use it to mean uh, we can use it to mean I'm receiving a gift, but the gift can take different forms. Or we can use it to mean I'm being done to. But if I'm being done to and it's for you, I'm not actually receiving a gift, I'm giving a gift. So I, I've, in the way I teach it, I take those two meanings apart mm -hmm. so that we know what we're talking about when we're... When most people say I'm receiving it, they mean I'm being done to. They don't necessarily mean that they realize it's for them. It, it varies. So, so the game, 
uh, taught me that those are different things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And what are, what are some signs that you know that you're receiving? When I'm receiving a gift that's for me, well, gratitude is one, and it touches my heart in a way. Tears will often come. And, um, and I'm putting myself first. I stop thinking about the other person's experience. Um, but yeah, it touches my heart in some way. Yeah. Gratitude. And I think your brain is temporarily bypassed. Mm -hmm. It's not that I'm against thinking, but sometimes it's, it's not running the show. If you are receiving a touch mm -hmm. and your brain is telling you something it's not good or, or it's uh, not the best or mm -hmm. uh, it's not your, you don't get that information from your brain, you mm -hmm. get it from your body. Mm -hmm. Does that feel good? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if I'm, if I'm like receiving <clears throat> body work or a massage, it's clearly for me and um, can, I very often will go into this sort of this trancey state that's really nourishing and healing. And it'll go where it wants to go. I, I don't plan that out. And I think that's one of the, one of the things about it. So there are signs that you know that you're receiving, and there are signs that you know that you're truly giving. Yeah, so that, what are the signs for you that you know that you're receiving? Well, where are my, uh, that I'm receiving? Uh -huh. uh, well, I, before a massage or any kind of an experience like that, I would have expressed an intention. Yeah. And uh, I don't like to zone out like you. I like to be awake mm -hmm. and I like to be stretched and manipulated. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when I feel that the uh, attention is on what I asked for, uh, this is what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was uh, getting ready for a uh, something with the gay games, and my feet were bothering me. And I had I was competing, and I asked the masseur to massage my feet, and he massaged my feet for about twenty minutes, and then he went on to the rest of my body. And I know that you're, it's his job to make everything one and mm -hmm. everything, but I didn't ask yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just wanted an hour of feet, mm -hmm. like release my feet. So when I got that, I was conscious that I am just receiving what I ask for. And it's probably going against the mo modality, uh -huh. whatever. Uh, so that's how I know. So, so what did that teach you in that experience? Well, I had to be alert and mm. renegotiate it while it was going on. Mm -hmm. And I had to ask for something that may not be in the... Yeah. I had a masseur uh, while I was doing body electric work. And I went to him and I said, uh, I brought some music and I said, today I am going to be angry. Mm -hmm. I, all I want you to do is keep massaging. Yeah. And I put the tape on and I started and I was screaming at him don't touch me leave me alone mm -hmm. and he stopped and I said don't stop <laughs> it, it's happening right. because you're doing it <laughs> so that I received that and I received I can remember I wanted to cry mm -hmm. so I, I took some music and I said I'm going to cry don't stop yeah and he just yeah. kept on going and yeah. I could keep crying because he was doing this yeah and I needed that, and I asked for that, and I received that. Yeah. And it feels good yeah. to know that. Yeah. Just as it does if you're a giver, to know that you've paid attention. Right. You keep your, the mind wanders and you call it back. There's no such thing as perfect attention. Mm -hmm. But we learned mm -hmm. in our modality of co-counseling mm -hmm. uh, how to practice that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's that's a big piece of knowing when knowing when I'm receiving what's happening when I'm receiving is that I've asked for it. And sometimes half the fun is just to keep asking. Do this. Oh now do that. Oh yeah, now do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's 
So then what happens when that sort of clicks, oh yeah, it's, it's mine, it's coming to me, it's what I asked for, and then what happens? Well, I think what, for me, one of the most profound things is I'm not alone. Mm. Ugh, yeah. That if I were running it and not asking for what I wanted, it would be like I'm being alone. Yeah. I'm giving, trying to give myself a massage yeah. rather than let somebody else do it. Mm. Yeah. And I don't want to be alone. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Proof. Yeah. And so what about when you're giving kind of when you do it? I think in teaching people how to do this, what I've noticed and I I of course I had to be trained is that their eyes are not on the prize. They're looking around the room because mm. something more interesting is happening. Yeah. yeah. Or they don't know how. They don't know the value of this. And the secret is in the wedding invitation. Say more. <laughs> uh, Mr. and Mrs. Betty Martin uh, cordially request the honor of your presence is what you're doing when you're a giver. Yeah, it's true. And it's very simple. Mm -hmm. There's no time for pyrotechnics or mm -hmm. dazzling people with your technique mm -hmm. and it's with are your eyes on me mm -hmm. not anywhere else yeah. can you do that for an hour yeah. if you can then you can be a good practitioner yeah and uh, are where's your mind are you doing the grocery list mm -hmm. probably it's normal so you have to, we have to learn how to forgive yourself, let it go, and start over. Mm -hmm. But the client doesn't know what's in your mind. Yeah. The client knows what's in your body. So if, you, if I s sense he or she is looking around for the oil and there's no hand on me, mm -hmm. this is not good. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's when I went to massage school, they taught us to always have a hand on the body. Right. If you're reaching for something, don't desert them. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's true. The presence, I, I describe it often as what we actually give when we give is that we, we set aside what we want. That's, that's really a big part of what makes it a gift. And the other thing is that what, what we're giving is our time and our attention. And all the rest of it is just the bonus that right there. Yes. I'm, I'm right here. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you don't. And you know, we do PSI with all kinds of costumes and mm -hmm. implements and techniques and yeah. everything. But really, you don't need that. That's right. You could do this on the phone mm -hmm. for half an hour. Mm -hmm. You could have this kind of session, mm -hmm. uh, just like you can for yeah. counseling. Yeah. Yeah. And when you are a giver, and Another sign that you are doing it well is when you are checking in periodically with mm -hmm. the person. Mm -hmm. How is it going for you? Mm -hmm. So even in three minutes, if you wanted me to rub your neck, I could say, how is that going for you? Mm -hmm. So then you could say it's too hard or too soft. Or... Right. Yeah. And I thought when I learned this, that we should know this without talking. Checking in is a right. skill I learned. Yes, exactly. Well, I did want to ask you about the surrender piece. One, when we were having our conversation a long time ago, you said something that has really stuck with me. And it was something to the effect of, we are, if, if we're created in the image of God, so to speak, and I use that personally very broadly, then we have power in our lives. And because we have power, we also have the desire to surrender that power. And um, playing with this freedom of game format lets you explore that surrender that's there. And you've talked about a little bit before about 
out to me because I would love to hear from you if you love what you want to say about that. So there is a dynamic of uh, power in our culture that is an abused concept because it means abuse of power over people. And going back to this idea where in any kind of theology, uh, people describe the deities as having power, mm -hmm. whether they're male or female. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that we have in inherently, we, if we agree to this premise that we are made in the image of God, mm -hmm. that we have these aspects. So it's a natural energy. I think power is an, an energy. And in our culture, it's been, it's been abused in a way that men have it and women don't, or white people have it and black people don't. But we are not, women are not asking men for their power because you have it in yourself. Mm -hmm. And maybe for cultural reasons, you have been uh, blocked mm -hmm. from making use of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, if we don't, share in that idea of power, we are very reluctant to surrender anything. Because it's say got, that, say, say that again. If we do not agree that we have we are inherently powerful, mm -hmm. we have that energy, mm -hmm. then we are strongly reluctant to surrender. Because if I if I believe that you have power and you're going to abuse me, I am not going to surrender. Oh right. Yes. Or if I perceive you as a person who has no personal power whatsoever, I would never think of surrendering. Uh, yeah. I must believe, if I'm going to surrender to you, that you can take the power. Mm -hmm. And it's a paradox that if we have this power, we want to surrender. And I think that uh, if there is a deity, God actually needs us, needs us as much as we need him. God needs us to surrender, otherwise his existence is uh, useless. Mm -hmm. And we need to use our power as well and have people surrender, because our, our life as a surrenderer is useless. Oh, I say that again. <laughs> Imagine your life of just surrendering to everything. Yeah. So that you don't you don't have the ability to tap into your power, so that you you have some ability to influence events. Yeah, right. And I think that that power is uh, enhanced by our ability to be aggressive. Yeah. And by aggressive, I people are afraid to hear that word. Uh, uh, one of the things I've studied is martial arts for the last 15 years because I wanted to learn more about aggression. And it simply means that I want to reach out and make an impression on you. Uh -huh. That's aggression. Yeah. yeah. So why and when and where and how I do it is what makes determines the quality of this aggression. <clears throat> and if you are thinking about uh, BDSM or role play, uh, in my role as the person having power, I am going to be aggressive. Mm -hmm. and you are the person who is surrendering mm -hmm. and you may or may not be aggressive as you choose in that in that role but in order for me to in order for you to surrender I need to be the person who is willing to assume this power for an hour or three minutes or however long absolutely, absolutely. and there's, there's something you said I'm still trying to like click it in there, it was about if I can't surrender, I can't actually take power either. That's right. Yeah. So in a way, it's a similar thing that you said, if you cannot uh, learn to receive, you cannot learn to give. Right. So, but there are people who, who by outward appearance, don't surrender at all. They constantly want to be in power. So, but they're, I would call it, they're, they're always vigilant. Ah. Uh, they are afraid of power. Um, and they are, so. Okay, because if you're, if you, if you, if I understand that I have power and you have power, then I can take it, I can take the power or I can surrender 
anytime I want to, and it works right for us. Yes. But if I'm afraid of my own, or I'm afraid of yours, then I can't. That's right. And if you're in a relationship, you are two people who have power. Mm -hmm. right. And then you have to work it out. Like, what does it mean to you? Mm -hmm. And it's not a matter, as we learned, of historical servitude mm -hmm. of females to males. So we're out of that conversation. And uh, in a way, I, I, we learned from reevaluation counseling and Charlie Kreiner that uh, everything in me is inherently male. Mm -hmm. I do not have an inner feminine. I have a male that's compassionate or kind and caring. Yeah. And you are a complete female. Yeah. And in you, you have a, a, a female who is powerful yeah. and aggressive. Yes. And look how we talk about it when I'm a male who, who has compassion oh, and you're yes. a female who has aggression. We, we don't know how to verbalize it in a way that's affirming. Right. Or we say, it's my inner feminine, and it's my, I hate that. Oh, <laughs> I hate that shake my hand. <laughs> oh my gosh. And people, a, uh, people use that feminine and masculine as if you're, like all these qualities here on this list are feminine qualities. And yes, men have them, it's okay, but you call them feminine, I say that's, Bullshit. Like, I, this, you know, I'm a female and I have all the same human qualities that you do. That's right. And by golly, let's quit telling each other that we don't have the, yeah. And it's not chromosomatic. No. Awesome. And it's divine. <laughs> yeah. As we see the stories of the gods. And uh, it, this is not, this doesn't simplify any struggle. Mm -hmm. at all, but it does simplify the way we speak about people. You know, how we speak, look how, how people speak about Hillary Clinton, mm -hmm. and the fact that she could be the most powerful woman in the United States. Mm -hmm. And what a thing. Well, I mean, I I'm not up on it. Oh, well, they, you know, they say she's aggressive, oh. and pushy, um, oh, and right. they use the bitch word, and uh, right. uh, and it's, and they, they wouldn't dare do this with a man. No, no, of course not. Oh, look how you're wearing your hair today, right. Madam President. Is that a statement? <laughs> right, right. Uh, one of my uh, co-counseling uh, buddies was a woman who, who taught me that to be a woman, it takes an hour to get yourself into that every morning to go out of the house. <laughs> she said, you wouldn't want this for all the money in the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, how that comes, come, comes back to the simple thing of uh, playing a three minute game is really it's an equal field. Mm -hmm. And uh, your needs are your needs and my needs are my needs. I just want to say thank you and thanks for having us and hosting us. And I'm so glad I got to meet thank you. Thank you, me too. I'm so glad. <laughs> and uh, thank you for coming to Eastern Mountain. And uh, we definitely want you to come back, both of you, and, thank you. and visit and become our friends. Thank you very much. Yeah. Have and have a wonderful trip in Europe. <laughs> this is our thank first you. time going to Europe. Woo!